Hello, everyone, and welcome to a massive edition of AEW Dark. I am Excalibur, joined as always by the human suplex machine, Taz, and the one and only Anthony Agogo. Anthony, great for you to join us here tonight. It's a pleasure. Excalibur, nowhere will I be on a Tuesday night than AEW Dark with you boys. But more important than anything else both of you men have said, the machine Brian Cage will be in action in this episode, well, kids. I was going to get to it, but I guess I don't have to anymore. That's right. Let's not waste any more time and throw it to our colleague Justin Roberts standing by inside the ring. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit and it is a six man tag team match. Approaching the ring at a total combined weight of 742 pounds, the team of Nick Camarado, QT Marshall, and the natural Dustin Rhodes. Three men that made their AEW Trios debut last week and Anthony, they look damn impressive. Unbelievable, Excalibur. Last week, what a performance from these three gentlemen. I cannot wait for tonight. And Taz, it was a couple weeks ago that Nick Camarado stepped foot. He answered the call of John Moxley, even though he was defeated. I think a moral victory for Nick Camarado. Oh, no doubt about it. Camarado was known right then and there against Mox, how physical Camarado can be. His toughness, yeah, to your point, you know, was, was not victorious, but they, there's no shame in losing to an athlete the level of a former world champion like John Moxley. And there we see their opponents, Vary Morales, Tony Vincita, Steve Gipke, the Jersey Muscle so Society. Tony Vincita, I believe, starting things off for Jersey Muscle. See what happens is starting against Dustin. Look at Dustin, Tw 222 pounds. He hasn't been that weight since high school. And he looks in. I, I don't want to say the best shape of his career, but close to. I'd say the best shape of his career, it's kind of a really would. He's had a very long career, but I get what you're saying. That was a nice shot. Definitely lean. There's a deep arm drag right there by Dustin. The thing is, you know, you wrestle someone like Dustin, you're really giving up a just a plethora of experience. You know, he just he's at one step, two steps, three steps ahead of you. It is right there. Oh, nice knee after the QT punch to the gut. Big running knee lift. Standing looks oh. all press there. One, two. QT just is so athletic, but yet he might not have the look of someone that would be able to do a standing moonsault, but so impressive. Taz, last week on Dark, Anthony Agogo said that uh, QT Marshall is the human encyclopedia. He could do any wrestling move. I had my doubts, and I think QT Marshall is on a quest to show me up. Wait, hold on a second. Just because uh, that man QT did a standing moonsault, and Anthony said last week, he's the, he can do every wrestling move in the world, Anthony. Is this true? I've got the privilege of spending most nights with QT in the Western School. I can see just how good he is on a daily basis. Oh, I don't, I don't dispute that. Good look at that strength. Oh, look at the power. Yeah. yeah. Nick, Nick Camarado. Oh, yeah, big time power, big power. Nick Camarado from uh, Philadelphia showing up his uh, his neighbors across the river from Jersey. Big back elbow there. So we talked about Camarado's, you know, academic background as an accountant. We talked about it as an amateur wrestler, how excellent of a career he had in college. That deep scoop power slam. Look at the far leg. This match was almost over before. <laughs> Jersey Muscle before Vincita can make a tag out. Ooh, that was a tight knee right there. Now Gipke coming in here. And just as I said that, and he walked right into an arm drag. That's the experience edge that Dustin Rhodes brings, Anthony. Yeah, we talk about that experience. And did you see how how deep he had that hook, uh, that that leg hooked for that pin a moment ago? He wants to win desperately. Double Irish, or excuse me, double uh, Russian leg sweep there. Different country. Though. Yeah. Not the it's more the Russian. <laughs> still, still, I mean. Yes, exactly. It's Europe, Taz. Come on. <laughs> quick reversal by QT. Vary Morales elevates up and over the top. Quick feet there. Oh, drop kick caught QT right on the button. Stunned him. And Morales pointed the elbow. Smart for Morales to follow up. He knew he had QT rocked. He went right in for him. You saw QT had a little black eye a moment ago. That's because he's in the ring every single night, wrestling the youngsters at the Nightmare Factory, trying to you know, give as much of his knowledge away as possible. Oh, 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 oh. I saw something on social media where he said one of those banged up lips and I came from, but I'll digress on it. Oh, Polish hammer here from oh, the Camarado. Big Camarado. Jersey muscle getting rocked. Scoop and a slam. Scoop and a slam from Nick Camarado. It's very hard to do that. That really will exhaust you. Shows the power of Camarado. Just carrying the weight of Jersey muscle is Nick Camarado. So intense. Ooh. Barry Morales. 
You need more than a drop kick to, to rock Nick. <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh. oh, that is awesome. We've seen Nick quite a bit over the last few months, but the last few weeks since he answered the call to John Moxley, we've seen the best Nick Comoroso, and I'll tell you why. That's because he's back training with QT Marshall at the Nightmare Factory. Yeah, having a having a steadying veteran Ooh. influence can mean a significant deal as Dustin Rhodes covers. Oh. Wow! Wow! No winners of this match. The team of Nick Camarado and the natural nightmare. So, I mean, Anthony, you getting like a percentage from QT? <laughs> no, I mean, you're like a hype man out here, bro. I'm an audience guy. Look, look <laughs> Muhammad Ali had custom Marto. Right. No, sorry, he had Angelo Dundee. Dundee. Mike Tyson had, had custom Marto. Right, right. Nick Camarado, Anthony Gogo. We've got QT Marshall. All right, all right, I feel you. Well, I feel well. sorry for you guys. <laughs> Dustin with the big bulldog. The, yeah, the military press into the bulldog from Dustin Rhodes. And these three guys have just been yeah. on a tear. Very interesting. You're right. They have been on a tear. Impressive. Impressive win for the trio of Dustin Rhodes, Nick Camarado, and QT Marshall. All right, guys, here we go. I can't wait to see it. Whoa. Oh my gosh, Chris, you've completely outdone yourself. But dead ass, yo, how is this even possible? I mean, look at the craftsmanship. It's so beautiful. Look how it turned out. It's absolutely exquisite. Drink what the demo god drinks. A little bit of the bubbly is back, baby. Supplies are limited. Go to littlebitofthebubbly.com and order now. Get it before it's gone, because last year sold out. Viva el vino brioso! Yay! Ay, ay, ay. Action in the tag team division coming up next as Frankie Kazarian and Christopher Daniels of SCU take on Lee Johnson and Aaron Solo next year on AEW Dark. This is a tag team contest set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Soon to be making their way to the ring at a combined weight of 355 pounds, the team of Lee Johnson and Aaron Solo. We've had a few looks at Lee Johnson and Aaron, Aaron Solo before here on AEW Dark. Lee Johnson has a huge opportunity tomorrow night on Dynamite when he teams up with Cody Rhodes to take on Pretty Peter Avalon and Cesar Bononi. And their opponents from Southern California at a combined weight of 425 pounds, the Fallen Angel Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian, SCU. But Taz, Lee Johnson can't afford to look ahead to tomorrow night. He has to keep his eye on one of the most experienced tag teams here in AEW, SCU. Absolutely, you're dealing with not one, but two ring generals right here in SCU. So if you are Lee Johnson, yeah, to your point, you cannot look forward <laughs> or past these men, I should say, and think about tagging up with Cody. You know, um, you gotta worry about gelling the right way with Aaron Solo and trying to give uh, these two ring generals, you know, a big loss, a big upset loss. But Anthony, you've trained with both Lee Johnson and Aaron Solo. You know the the respect, the reverence that both these men have to those that uh, that came before them, that paved their way. Yeah, I do, and I've also seen how much talent both gentlemen have. Lee Johnson, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I do believe he is the future of AEW. 23 years old, and he can do it all already. Big shot, Lee Johnson, and the Fallen Angel Christopher Daniels starting things off for their respective duos. Oh, Lee Johnson. Well, nice using his body weight on that arm drag, drop, pulling his opponent over quickly, dropping his body weight to the mat, which is a key to a, an arm drag, which and you, is such an old school move, but very effective. You saw, you saw Christopher Daniels a little bit of a smirk, a nod of the head. He's like, "All right, you got me. Yeah, you got me." And he got him there again with that big scoop slam. See how Daniels gets himself to the ropes, just waits, just on a full body slam. He realizes, "All right, no problem. No, I'm not going to rush into it. Someone who's a little bit green is going to rush into it. Not, not a guy like Daniels. He's going to wait." 
And that's the uh, the importance of the, the veterancy of Christopher Daniels. He's able to calm himself down. He's, he's not getting flustered when, uh, you know, a less experienced opponent might rush headlong, as Taz said, Anthony. No, you are. Yeah, we've seen it all. There's a lovely arm drag. And the hip toss. Christopher Daniels showing off his composure here. Yeah, he's seen it all. There's not one style that he hasn't come up against in his illustrious career, um, Christopher Daniels. I think Lee Johnson will learn a lot being in the ring with these two, these two veterans. Step on the back of the leg, kick to the midsection, clubbing strike across the back. Just a pair of boots on the spine of Lee Johnson. And that's what SCU does so well, just their stereo tag team work and their chemistry is just unmatched. Lee Johnson escapes out. Great heads up maneuver there by Lee Johnson. Nothing fancy about it, but he knew he was in harm's way and he made the tag out to Aaron Solo. Show of respect there by both of these athletes. Colin Nobo type, Kazarian. Nice snap return right there and floats over to the front. Headlock. Good stuff. Trying to sit out is so not happening. He's hanging on there, Kazarian. Looked like Kazarian may. Went for that underhook, right? Yeah. yeah I saw that. And, uh, but Solo able to, to anticipate it. That's one of the, the most important things that comes with experience. You might not be able to see what your opponent's doing, but you can feel what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Doing. That's a huge part. I mean, uh, early in my training, many moons ago, we would train with a blindfold on sometimes, but my trainer will learn how to chain wrestle better. Uh, to your point, you don't have to see what's going on. You should feel what's going on. I didn't know the character of Mr. Miyagi was based on Johnny Ross. Yeah. What, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Taz. I always do the same in my boxing career. I'd, I'd put the blindfold on and shadow box around the ring. You don't want to. You want to feel. You want to. You want to feel the ring, don't you? You want to. Yeah, learn. That's, absolutely. That's how you learn your 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 ring IQ. Yeah, that's exactly right. You feel it. You feel body weight where you know where someone's pressure is. You could feel it without seeing it. Oh, look at this nice job by Aaron Solo. Whoa. Solo drop kick. Great job. Solo, he's, this is his 12th year as a professional wrestler, extremely, extremely talented. I think he's probably performing better now than ever because he's been spending time at the Nightmare Factory at the best wrestling school in the world. Anthony just got another 100 bucks deposited into his account. I'm thinking Anthony gets free t-shirts every time he plugs, uh, you know, the Nightmare Factory. Is that oh, leg lariat there by Christopher Daniels. And one thing that, uh, that we need to mention here is a cover. Is, uh, Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian, they put that uh, that stipulation on themselves that the next time that this particular duo of SCU loses, that will be the last time that Daniels and Kazarian tag together. And what a feather in the cap that would be for Solo and Johnson were they to pick up the victory here tonight. That'd be huge, actually. Saying that you, you, you retired or, or ended the team, I should say, of SCU, that'd be something. It's got a it's tall order. Let's see what happens. Right now, they're looking pretty good on Daniels. Solo brings Daniels out towards center. Lee Johnson falling neck breaker with the assist from Solo. Cover here. Smart right here. If you're Lee Johnson, he realizes he's in control. He's keeping Daniels far enough away from Kazarian in that corner. Took his time over with that vertical suplex cover. Now hard cover. Not happening. Daniels able to kick out. Smart by Lee to get control again of the head, keep Daniels near the corner of Solo. His own corner, I should say, with Solo. Breaks on there. Christopher Daniels, vertical suplex, reversed by Solo. Solo sends him into the ropes. Oh, Daniels caught him on the fireman's carry. Rolls through, tag out to Kazarian. Daniels looking to cover some distance. Big elbow drop. Ultimate place, Kazarian, even bigger leg drop. Cover here. One, two, no. That was nice. That was really nice. That cohesive unit is um, you only get that through experience. And you no, know, don't get much more experience than, than Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian. And speaking of SCU, the third member of SCU, Scorpio Sky, has a brand new podcast covering video games, pop culture, recaps of AEW Dynamite. Catch Wrestling with the Week every Monday. Wherever you listen to podcasts, Rooster Teeth, YouTube, Spotify, all podcast platforms. As Kazarian covers here, just a two count. I haven't had the privilege of being that, having a leg drop dropped on me like that, Taz. What does that feel like? When <laughs> I don't know if it's a privilege. You got <laughs> a, a it hurts like man. the Dickens. Yeah, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah, no, especially with that kind of height. Yeah, you just feel it. it. It could knock the wind right out of you, right across your chest, Cappy. Oh, Oof, that could knock the wind out of you, too. Great misdirect there. Kazarian gets sent up and over the top by Daniels. Daniels covers lateral press here. 
Just a two count. Well, Solo, listen, we've seen Aaron Solo wrestle enough here in AEW on dark. And as you guys just spoke about how long his career is and his successes, he's tough. He's triple tough. I mean, I, you know, I don't think people realize how tough he is. <laughs> and you just saw his tough was able to take that chop, which was nasty by Daniels. Well, he took the chop. Let's see if he can recover from the chop. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if his chest got caved in a lot. That was pretty, pretty heavy chop. There's another one. And the very heavy-handed Frankie Kazarian laying in some strikes of his own. Aaron Solo trying to even the odds here. You're right, Taz. I've, I've been a pro wrestler for, what, six months now? And I, I know how, how tough this business is. So to spend 11, 12 years in a business like Solo has done, that's a testament to how, how tough he is. Absolutely. Oh, both men had the same idea, went for the cross body, met in the center of the ring. Yeah, it's an opportunity for both men to try to get their partners in turning point in the match. Can Solo get to Johnson first? Can Kaz? Well, it looks like Kaz got to Daniels. Oh, maybe not. Oh! Ooh. Big collision in the center. Lee Johnson getting the better of it for the second time. And a right hand drops Kazarian. Lee Johnson kicked to the midsection of the Fallen Angel. Hammer throw into the corner, reversed by Daniels. Uh-oh. Christopher Daniels up on the shoulders of Lee Johnson. Lee Johnson taking him for a spin. You're going Air for an airplane yeah, spin? Yeah, I, I haven't seen an airplane spin in quite so oh. long. That drop kick. But he had uh, he had Daniels all dizzy and then caught him with a drop kick point on the chin. Lee Johnson, blue thunder, bomb one, two. Almost a page on Christopher Daniels playbook there. Absolutely, that's exactly what it was. That'll rent some space in your head if you're Daniels. Like, man, this guy almost beat me with my own stuff. I've taken that blue thunder bomb, and um, it does knock the wind out of you. Knocks you for six. And oh, Daniels power bombed onto the the waiting knees of Aaron Solo. Oh, rolling Death Valley driver Solo diving foot stops. Lee Johnson covers with some urgency. No. So close right there for Lee Johnson. Lee Johnson was about a half second away from picking up his first victory in an AEW ring. And what momentum that would be. What wind in his sails would that be headed into tomorrow night in Dynamite, where he will team up with Cody Rhodes? So, go ahead, sorry. I was going to say Kazarian and, and Daniels, they were half a second away from never tagging again. That's true, yeah. Ever again. Daniels goes over the top. Lee Johnson and Aaron Solo lost control of Daniels, and Daniels took advantage of it. He felt the momentum shift, and King Clobber swords Frankie Kazarian. Clothesline leg Larry takes down Solo. Lee Johnson, swing and a miss, gets the leg drop across the back of the head. Zarian is cooking out here. That's that experience. You saw, I don't know if you saw, but Kazarian, he, he fainted. There's a half, half second he fainted, and Lee Johnson put his head in, and he took a leg drop for his, his trouble. Oh, backstabber there. Garmin Geary by Christopher Daniels. Oh, German that. suplex with the bridge. One, two. No! Wow! That was close. Great perseverance shown by Aaron Solo. Again, discussed his toughness, and he's showing it. Fantastic match this is. A really even match. Yeah, this could most certainly go either way, as Frankie Kazarian looking to make an end of things here. Solo gets sent to the outside, courtesy of Kazarian. Kazarian brings Solo in the hard way with the cutter. Cover, one. Two, no, big shot, Elite Johnson there in time to break it up. Maybe the pressure that they put on themselves, FCU, starting to feel it a little bit here. Yeah, this this could be the, the end of the run for Daniels and Kazarian. Tope suicida from Lee Johnson. Chris Daniels down on the outside. Aaron Solo inside the ring with Frank Kazarian. We heard Justin Roberts call for the, the 10 minute call. Oh, here, look at the solo rolls, Kazarian up. No! That was so close. Quick duck right there, watch out. Screw high kick, caught Kazarian on the side of the head. Less than 10 minutes remaining on the time limit for this one. Lee Johnson, Aaron Solo in control of SCU at this point. Solo and Johnson Pepper and Kazarian and Daniels with shots. Oh! <laughs> Great counter, great anticipation there by SCU. Oh, high boot by Kazarian, almost a modified total elimination there. Yeah, I haven't seen that in a while. But Aaron Solo with a chance. Oh, well, he had a chance until he dove into the arms 
of Frankie Kazarian. Oh my God, Solo's in grave danger right here. Best Meltzer ever, courtesy of SCU. One, two, three. SCU. The winners of this match, SCU. Well, that thing got crazy, man. That, that, was a, that was a heck of a tag team contest. Anthony SCU lives to fight another day. What a match that was. I think the right winners were, were the Kazarian and, and, and Daniels, but sometimes you lose the rest of the match and you learn a lot from them. And I think Solo and Johnson, their stock has gone up from, from that match. Most certainly, but that best Meltzer ever. I'm not sure if there's anybody on planet Earth that can withstand that tag team offense. Frankie Kazarian, Christopher Daniels, SCU, your winners here tonight. We didn't even really get to touch on you and Sean Spears. How's your back? It's a little bit sore. Oh my God. <laughs> What's up? I want to talk about Wrestling with the Week. Whatever we have interest in, we're going to chop it up. Did you get the PS5? Ugh. I'm over here all weekend playing PS4 like a heathen. <laughs> Scorpio Sky and myself, James Willems, we got distracted. We're going to be talking about video games. We're going to be talking about pop culture. Have you seen the New York Subway Rat Man? What? <laughs> we're going to be recapping AEW. It's the most exciting part of the show. We're basically going to be talking about the week. We got a lot to get into, man. It's also what the people want to see. <laughs> oh my God. Voila. This is progress. Scorpio Sky, James Willems, Wrestling with the Week. Wrestling with the Week. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe now. Woo. It's beautiful. I love it. Well, check this out. The Machine, the FTW World Champion, Brian Cage with Hook in his corner, is coming up right now. This bout is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Chico, California. Weighing to 172 pounds, the machine, Brian Cage. And his opponent, currently in the ring from Champaign, Illinois. Weighing 165 pounds, Jake St. Patrick. Taz, as you know, I have completely sworn off betting on pro wrestling matches due to some uh, recent bad experiences. I understand that. I'll say a thing that no one else has said it. Hook is in the corner of Brian Cage, but I digress. Go ahead, the next cow. I'm in a bad mood already. I just got in a bad mood. I'm aggravated. <laughs> and obviously, Cage is aggravated. Oh, oh, oh my God. He just leveled Jake St. Patrick with that thrust kick. Sick of this conspiracy in this company against me and my people. Tired of it. Anthony, have you noticed a conspiracy by AEW officials against Team Taz? Oh, ooh, nice uppercut. Oh, nice combination there. Goodbye. See you later, bro. <laughs> Release German oh. suplex. Almost sent Jake St. Patrick the hard way back to Champagne. Who better? <laughs> yeah, that's, I, think, I think maybe... Uh, this is going to be a short night here for Mr. St. Patrick. Brian Cage hoisting up Jake St. Patrick. Power bomb. Brings him up again. A second one. <laughs> Looking for the. Tr oh, oh the imagine bomb on the when knee. that happens to Sting in the street fight at Revolution. Well, imagine oh, the drill the claw. Imagine that against Darby Allen. Imagine that. The drill claw cage. Not paid by the minute. There is your winner, the machine, Brian Cage. When well, Cage and Starks gets together in that street fight, brother, you know what's going to happen. Brian Cage and absolute Ricky Starks will take on Sting and the TNT champion, Darby Allen, March 7th on pay per view at AEW Revolution. Putting the beat down on people. And you know what, Anthony? As far as Hook, you saw that tweet from your buddy QT Marsh. He busted his lip up, didn't he? Were you there that day for training? I wasn't there that day, but uh -huh. he's a bad man. That was a savage beating, and I know, I know a little bit about Hook, and I know Hook's got that same savagery that Brian Cage has got. As Brian Cage is locked and loaded, 
He's the FCW champion. I mean, Taz, at the beginning of the match, I was actually going to ask you for the, some gambling insight. Who do you think the smart money was on? Obviously, it's Brian Cage. I, yes. I, I don't know why you would go to me for gambling information. I'm here for victories for my unit. You know that. I'm all business. And victory achieved here tonight. I become, I become, I become, I become, I uh. become. Anthony, Max, what seems to be troubling you? Dr. Kelby, what have we become? Now that we betrayed everyone we've ever loved, we, we pushed them all away. And I can't remember the lyrics to Judas. Mm. Well, the only way you two will get through this is if you get through it together. I mean, come <gasps> on. Oh. Just picture it. Us. Together. together. Hey, it's the acclaimed. Welcome to the dinner day boat nair. Judas in my mind, and I think I'm gonna yawn. Hey, it's the acclaimed with another hit song. So we cut and sing along short like it's last week. Right before I left, little Max in a trash heap. Beat him badly with the KO. Beat him so quick like he Jose Canseco. The acclaim, yo, it ain't no thing. When we beat in a circle, the bell gon' ring. A ding ding. 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 Yeah, yeah. Jericho, leadership skills you are lacking. Got the foundation of your little group cracking. Sammy cares more about his vlog than the crew, Chris. I'm the plug, and you should go acoustic. Turn it down to the subtitles Your confidence is misplaced like your world title I beat MJF on the big stage Let me give your hand a little kiss, babe I leave a bitter taste yeah. You two are so narcissistic You took a camera crew on a dinner date It's okay, make jokes, keep singing We are the acclaimed and we keep their heads ringing A ding ding, a ding ding A ding ding, a ding ding Hey, a ding ding, hey, a ding ding, ding ding, a ding ding, ding ding. The native beast Nyla Rose with Vicky Guerrero in her corner will be in action next here on AEW Dark. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied to the ring by Vicky Guerrero from Washington, D.C. She is the native beast, Nyla Rose. She is the native beast and the former AEW Women's World Champion looking to get back into contention. She has Vicky Guerrero by her side. Yeah, Nyla definitely has a, uh, well, the women's division that's just some kind of a special mean streak that she possesses that's definitely impressive. And her opponent from Houston, Texas, Miranda Alizé. Miranda Alizé making her return to AEW. Got her first look at her about a year ago. Great to see her back in action here tonight. What a tough draw, Taz. Yeah, no, no, it's great to see her back for sure, but you're right, I mean, dealing with somebody like Nyla, especially with that motivation Vicky Guerrero gives to Nyla, I mean, it's gonna be tough. Cazadora, arm drag attempted by Nyla Rose. Oh wow, yeah. Nyla's power on full display here. Oh, ho, 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 ho. And very impressive right there. And of course, Nyla Rose will be part of the upcoming AEW Women's World Championship title eliminator tournament. 16 competitors from around the globe vying for a shot at Hikaru Shida. Nyla Rose hammering. Miranda Alizé, oh, diving splash. No, ah. wow. Sending that message that at any time she could take control and get the victory. Come on, Nyla putting the pressure 
there on the back of the neck of Miranda Alizé. And you can see Vicky Guerrero really enjoying seeing all this punishment being dished out to Miranda Alizé, kind of similar to how you are when Hook's around ringside. Uh, well, it's not just Hook. I'm the same supporter for even people that are not blood related to me. You like Hobbs, <laughs> like Cage, and Stocks. Come on now, please. Hook, I'm probably tougher, son. Big elbow strikes there from Miranda Alizé. Trying to flip up, looking for a work on Ron. Oh, no. boy. Nyla Rose put on the brakes. Miranda escapes out, lands on her feet. Back elbow, swinging a miss there by Nyla. Drop kick to the top of the knee. Miranda Alizé. I wouldn't worry about doing that. I would just keep that offense coming. See, that little delay right there caught it. Next, Calvin. Ross body and just gets tossed. Now Nyla Rose taking off the gauntlet, hits the back elbow in the corner, and the clothesline levels Miranda Alizé. Nyla Rose picking Miranda uh -oh. Uh -oh. up. Beast bomb. One, two, three. There is your winner, the native beast, Nyla Rose. Taz, a statement victory heading into that AEW Women's World Championship title eliminator tournament. Yeah, no doubt about it. You got to look at it as one of the favorites as you see some of the ladies hey, watching you, on here. Even Lisa Diamante, uh, Miranda Alizé, part of uh, Las Sicarias, and uh, I think they're they're a little disappointed in yeah, how this match went. Probably definitely upset that Nyla got the win right there over their friend, but. A beast bomb that sit out power bomb just so impressive. And as you mentioned the tournament, it's gonna be some kind of tournament, something special to show. And you definitely have to look at Nyla as something, someone that can definitely be uh, deadly in that thing. Definitely one of the favorites, the former AEW Women's World Champion, Nyla Rose. Well, look at what's next. The ever talented, ever explosive pack coming at you. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Soon to be making his way to the ring from Newcastle upon Tyne, England, weighing 206 pounds. He is a bastard. Pack! So, Anthony, across the pond. And his opponent, currently in the ring. So, Anthony, across the pond in your home, how far are you from Newcastle, where Pat is from? A long, long way. <laughs> a long, long way. To, is there any, any further north than Newcastle? You're in Scotland. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty high up there. Right below Hadrian's Wall as Pack, the number five ranked contender in the AEW singles division, taking on VSK here tonight. Anthony, what about an incredible main event match last week on Dynamite Pack? Ray Phoenix and John Moxley taking on Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers. Explosive. I mean, then, yeah. what else can you say but yeah. explosive? And Pack muscling VSK up to the corner. Referee Bryce Remsburg calling for a clean break. Taz, you know something about having a, a bad attitude. Yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I made a living on it, and I kind of still do amongst uh, my team Taz unit. Because the thing is, you know, sometimes when you feel like you're being done wrong or people or a company or somebody's against you and your people, it pisses you off. So that's kind of where Pac's at. Now, Taz, I know in your, in your, you know, if I ask you, you're going to say yourself. So I want, I want a true statement here. Who's got a worse attitude, yourself or Pac? Ooh, that's a tough one. And I, I consider Pac a friend. <laughs> but um, I probably have a worse reputation, but I'm older, so. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Pack here with control of the wrist of VSK. VSK rolls through, rolls back. Nope, kips up to his feet, trying for control, and he gets it. VSK with a tall order here. Yeah, tough, tough dealing with Pack after we just witnessed on Dynamite to the point you men were talking about. And Anthony, when, when you're in there with an uh, opponent that has the, the reputation of somebody like Pack, what does VSK need to do to, to kind of neutralize the inherent advantages that Pack may have? Well, if I was me, I'd say, well, VSK, he's just, well, I'm speechless. I, I don't know what to say. Like, what, what could he do against Pack? Pack got everything. He's got every tool in the toolbox. There's nothing he can't do. So, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a long night work for, uh, for VSK today. I think that if you, you know, when you're dealing with someone 
that's a complete hybrid, as is Pack. Okay, you have to go right at them, full speed right away, like before the bell, jump them. VSK didn't do that. But, I mean, stuff like that to get some sort of an advantage on a guy like Pack. he is a full throttle beast in that ring. I love his pissed off attitude, too. And, Taz, that's not to take anything away from VSK's no, skills no, or no, abilities. No, no. But you have Pack. I mean, he is, pardon the pun, but an elite level athlete here. Yeah, absolutely. And it's tough, you know, when you're dealing with someone like that with worldly experience in every major promotion in the world. I mean, you know, all the stuff he's done, he, you know, it's tough if you're VSK dealing with someone like a Pack, especially, like I said, in the moment, the mood that he's in as of late, it's tough. And you have to remember, Pack had a very lengthy layoff from pro wrestling before he arrived here in AEW. And then, unfortunately, the quarantine, the global pandemic, made another lengthy layoff for Pack. So his 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 bad mood, his dark mood, got even darker. And Anthony, I mean, I, I know you you know something about you know being isolated, being away from from what you want to do. And that that can either drive men to madness or greatness. Yeah, exactly. And it puts a chip on your shoulder. And Pac certainly got a chip on his shoulder. I was only going to say, actually, uh, Miscala, but you made a great point. Like, he was locked in for eight months. Like, I was back in England at the time during the pandemic lockdown. Eight months. He couldn't leave the house. He couldn't do anything. So he locked himself in his little house and he trained. And he's come back even better than he was before. Just imagine that nice drop step into that. Probably a mat return. They went for a mat return. Oh, no, VSK. Counter. Yeah, nice counter. Good escape. And a drop kick right on the money there for VSK. You got to keep on him now, buddy. VSK, get on him quickly. Don't wait now. Burning a little daylight here. Oh, but he baited Pack in. Hit the neck breaker across the knee. VSK diving uppercut. Good job. He's got a big chance for an upset here. No. Well, I like that he went for the cover there, VSK. That was smart. That was smart. It didn't work, but it was smart. He's no mug, VSK. He's, he's, a, he's yeah. a great talent. Yeah, no, he knows what he's doing. He's, he's, he's well spoken around. He just ate a boot there, though. Pack hit that boot to the jaw of VSK. Now he, oh, he's, he's, he's looking for the in. brutalizer here. Why not? He's got it locked go. in. Yeah. And he's wrenching back on the neck. VSK forced to submit. Here is your winner, the bastard, Pack. Well, Taz, I said Pack reminded me of you attitudinally, but also in terms of the, the submission brutality there. Yeah, you know, you can see the intention in the eyes and his submission game obviously is on point along with everything else that he does in that ring, as Anthony mentioned earlier. But yeah, you know, once you get a hold like that locked in on you with the upper body power that a guy like Pack has, you're not getting out of that hold. It's just not, it's impossible. It really is. Pack picking up a victory here tonight on AEW Dark, continuing his climb in the singles division. Sonny Kiss goes one on one with KC Navarro next year on AEW Dark. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Jersey City, New Jersey, by 188 pounds, the concrete rooms. Sonny Kiss. And now it's time for Taz's favorite part of the evening, the show within the show, AEW Starks. Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Uh -oh. You see that, Taz? That's one of the most succulent asses in the business. What are you talking about, Ricky? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, he just went over and just basically threw up all over your mic. Do you realize that, bro? Wait. That thing's got to smell like, like a Dude. hot dog at Asbury Park he, on the boardwalk, bro. He smelled like stale coffee and cigarettes. Oh, my God. <laughs> what in the world? Wait, Justin's got a job to do here. Hold on. And from Miami, Florida, weighing 145 pounds, KC Navarro. You're welcome, Justin. KC Navarro had a very, very impressive outing against Ray Phoenix right here on AEW Dark. Oh, he didn't come away with a victory. I think he turned a lot of heads. Big opportunity for Navarro here tonight against Sonny Kiss. Ooh, Colin Herbal tie-up. Nice. Waste lock and switch there. And Navarro standing switch of his own. Leaf frogs over. Whoa, watch out. Come quick, man. Off the bottom rope, charging in. Oh, there's the those powerful legs of Sonny Kiss. Navarro threw the kick. Sonny Kiss anticipated it. Sweep of the leg. Leg drop. Nobody home. Casey Navarro threw a kick of his own. Over here, high stack. Just a one count drop kick to the knees, though. Cuts off Navarro's momentum. 
Oh, Oof. big leg drop. Yeah, splitting leg drop. Shows that flexibility that Sonny has. Tremendous. I, I had that happen to me once when Oops. I was 22. Oh, really? It was a terrible night, but. Yeah, someone dropped their ass on your face? Started off good. Is it in a match? <laughs> no. <laughs> Casey oh. Navarro having a rough night. Running right into that high roundhouse kick. Shoulder in the midsection by Sonny Kiss. Conquer your ghost. Coming oh, over oh. the top. Sunset flip. No. Nope. Boom. Oh, wow. wow. Great job by Sonny Kiss. That was impressive. And you notice on that sunset flip, Sonny felt like he didn't have it, so he bailed out. And as Navarro rose to his feet, Sonny hit that pump kick. But Navarro able to anticipate, courtesy of those, uh, the little twerk in there that Sonny did. Actually, yeah. I think that was a lot of twerk. That was a lot of twerk. <laughs> but I'll tell you, Navarro had a little bit of a sense of urgency. He realized there was an opening right there, and he zoned in on it and got a rear choke right now on Sonny Kiss. Only has one hook in, though, as Sonny able to use that leg strength to rise oh. to his feet and back Navarro into the corner. Oh! Oof. Oh! Ooh, wow. Sonny Kiss swinging for the fences here, Ricky. I'm, I'm impressed. I like it. Swing and a miss there by Sonny. Navarro, oh, with the trip. Sonny gets caught up on the center strand. Navarro over the top drop kick to the side of the head. Making friends with the camera crew. Everybody's got these hand signals and these things they do. Oh, oh DDT just spiked Sonny Kiss. Just stick to that, that was That's great. It. Cover one, two, no. That was an awesome DDT and again, showing the toughness of Sonny Kiss able to kick out of that that impressive DT. Can Casey Navarro keep the composure here? Do what is necessary to put away Sonny Kiss. Navarro waiting for Sonny oh. wow. to rise to his feet, but that was his first mistake of Sonny. Uh oh, I've seen this before. Could this be the axes and O's? Oh. It was. See you and goodbye. <laughs> Taz, you teaching that in the Team Taz Dojo anytime soon? No, nah, Ricky knows that we don't do that in the Dojo. Hell no. We don't do splits in the corner. And it's impressive. But then again, none of uh, the men in Team Taz, unfortunately, have the flexibility of a sunny kiss. Speak for yourself. I can do a split for sure. <laughs> okay, I want to see it on social media. I <laughs> no, want to see it on mind. social media. Never mind. I want to see it. Sunny kiss with a huge stunner there and ends the night of Casey Navarro. Oh, the winner of this match, Sunny. Kiss. Sunny Kiss, tremendous, tremendous in this matchup for sure. Both Sunny Kiss and Joey Janela victorious here tonight on AEW Dark. And that man, the the wild man from the streets of Asbury, New York. Asbury, New oh, Park, New Jersey. Oh, Jersey. Oh, Asbury Park, New Jersey, damn it. And he's got an opportunity at Darby Allen for the oh. TNT Championship tomorrow night on Dynamite. And I hope, and I think Ricky would agree, that Janela beats Darby Allen. See, Taz, that's what happens when you make me carry too much water. I start getting flustered. <laughs> like a friggin' camel out of nowhere. <laughs> Joey. Oh, oh, boy. Oh, oh boy. Oh, boy. That hole. I should make that my Twitter header. Just freeze frame that. Screenshot Jones. Well, look at this. Coming up next, Ty Conte collides with Alice Gracia, and that is next. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Ty Conte. AEW Starks continues here tonight as Ty Conte in action next here in the women's division. And let's point out Anna Jay is in the corner. That's right, and they, uh, Ty Conte. they're actually coming out of the same tunnel here tonight. And, uh, yeah. Previous appearances, they've come out of opposite tunnels, so a little more synergy being shown by the BFFs. Yeah. Corporate synergy. No, it's personal synergy. Oh, I just like corporate synergy. And her opponent from San Antonio, Texas, Alex Gracia. Alex Gracia, the pink dream, taking on the number five ranked Ty Conti. He's the pink dream, I'm the orange dream. I've made, <laughs> I, I've made that reference before here on Dark Tags, oh. and you've shut me down every single time. So. Sickle, huh? That's odd, you see a left-handed handshake. That must be a female thing. No, Taz, it's just a person thing, I think. <laughs> I don't think so. I, I, I don't. I shake hands with people. I shake with my right hand. Weisenheimer. I'm okay, saying. I'm just saying too. <laughs> They're amputated. I don't. I've seen oh. people shake with left hands. That's oh, all. Look I'm at saying. that. Look at that cover. 
Well, great job, Ty Conti, right now. Got that front headlock in there. It's not that funny, it's Calvin. You stop hitting your cough button. It's really not that funny. So, anyway, <laughs> Ty Conti in control right here of Alex Gracia. <laughs> Gracia comes out underneath. Oh, yes. oh! That Ogoshi type hip toss right there. Rolling through, got the wrist control. Ogoshi Maintains yeah. wrist control. Oh. And the round kick to the chest. Ty Conti wishing oh. Gracia a good night. I like that. Oh, no. Look at this, Gracia with the roll up here. I nice stack. Can't get cocky. No, you can't. And uh, you don't want to smell like it either. <laughs> oh, look at this. Roll oh. for knee ball. Gracia, and you you saw Ty Conti instinctively drawing Alex Gracia towards the center of the ring. Gracia now rolling to that's the bottom smart. rope. That's a smart thing to do. Oh, watch out. Oh, wow, that's tough. While both ladies' legs are intertwined, falling to the outside. Oh, that's tough. This number five ranking here for Ty Conti marks the first time she has cracked the top five in the AEW women's division. She's got a three in one record this year. She deserves it. She's earned it. She, and it's about time that she's oh. being recognized properly, in my opinion. See Alex Gracia favoring that leg after the knee bar there by Ty Conti. Ty Conti's in trouble here. Gracia, the area code shot. Over here, hooks the far leg. The tiger, tiger faint kick, only getting a one count. And now, got to suffer full Nelson here. Yeah, see it full Nelson on Ty Conti. You can see Ty Conti, though, bringing her, her head upright, not allowing the carotid artery to be cut off by her own head. Also, clasping her own hands behind her head helps to alleviate right. some of the pain. And that's a, oh, but she had a ham lock. She got, had a double wrist lock. Oh, 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 oh my God. That was, that was nasty. That might be it. She, she probably just cover here. Please cover. Win. That was wicked. <laughs> God. She's definitely shorter after that, huh? Oh! Wow, how about Gracia? A lot of toughness. Yeah, great uh, great Spitfire attitude, but Ty Conti punishing her with strikes. I don't think so. Oh! <laughs> A series of clotheslines. The hook kick rattles Gracia. The pink dream very quickly devolving into the pink nightmare here tonight. Oh! oh, oh, oh. Wow. <laughs> Home run. Gracia tried to reverse. Oh. Man, pump knee kick. Strikes. This is I, a I massacre. It was a knee. It was a pump kick. You're right. Oh. She keeps hold of that leg. She blocked the foot. Now she gets both grapes in, legs in. And this finish that she's used the submission is great. To choke. And Alex, yeah. oh. Alex Gracia just forced to tap out. No winner of this match. Tie. Conti. Ricky, you spend a lot of time hanging out near the women's locker room. Of course. Seems like Ty Conti enjoys this. I, that was, that was oh. full on, wow, look at that. Full on hunting season right there. It, it was a Valentine's Day massacre, you know what I'm saying? Ty Conti. I see what you did there. This was the end of the night for Alex Gracia. Team Taz. Continues to put each other over, but right now, <laughs> this woman right here, Ty Conti, is on a roll. All right, guys, here we go. I can't wait to see it. Whoa! Que yo bendiga la botella. Oh my gosh, Chris, you've completely outdone yourself. But dead ass, yo, how is this even possible? I mean, look at the craftsmanship. It's so beautiful. Look how it turned out. It's absolutely exquisite. Drink with the Demo God drinks. A little bit of the bubbly is back, baby. Supplies are limited. Go to littlebitofthebubbly.com and order now. Get it before it's gone, because last year sold out. Viva el vino brioso! Marco's stunt of the Jurassic Express goes one-on-one -on -one with the Hollywood hunk, Ryan Nemeth, here next on AEW Dark. This contest is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Coming down the aisle from Hollywood, California, weighing 208 pounds, Ryan Nemeth. Ryan Nemeth. 
You know, Taz, it's a good thing we didn't establish that he's the Hollywood hunk because it only says it on his big screen, his trunks, and his lower third. Well said. And I think he has, looks like he might have something to say. Well, if he's gonna take the mic from Justin, that's a good thing in my opinion. I just want to address the elephant in the room right now because I get the feeling that a lot of you don't like me. Hmm. You guys wouldn't know anything about that. I've been there before. You, you don't like, like that I'm smart. You don't like that I'm attractive. You don't like how famous I am. You don't like that I'm known the world over. You don't like that I'm in TV and film and I'm a true hunk. A true Hollywood hunk. Oh, he said Get it, it out. Get it out of your system. It's healthy. Hollywood hunk. Oh, no, he was talking about booing. Oh, certain type of level of nasalness in his voice. But I think if on. you search within your heart, if you search within your minds, and you look deep down in there, you'll realize you can admit it, you like me. You adore me. Everyone around the ring, everyone in the back, everyone watching at home on their phones, just say it out loud. It's going to feel good. Say it. I love Ryan. I love Ryan. I love Ryan. We all love Ryan. Yes. Doesn't it feel good? Yes. It's good. Ryan Reynolds. It's good. Feels good here, too. No, Ryan Barker Thank from ShopEW.com. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Big plug right there. I like Ryan Nemeth. No, you love Ryan. I love Ryan. He just won me over. And his opponent from Olive Branch, Mississippi, weighing 120 pounds, Marco Stunt. You ever wonder who he waves to? Hold on a second. 120 pounds. You said 120 pounds? Sorry. I beg you. Marco Stunt, the last time we saw him was last week on AEW Dynamite. FTR and Tully Blanchard had him handcuffed to a chair with his mouth gagged. I saw Marco earlier tonight. I said, what happened? How'd you, how'd you get free? And he said they just let him go. FTR, no, no, seriously, FTR was sending a message to Jurassic Express that any of them could be taken at any time. Okay. That's scary. It's real scary. scary. Hey, about maybe Team Taz around here, we should start kidnapping people at work here. Well, no, nah, maybe. No. Oh, 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 Marco Stunt. Look kick there, dropping the Hollywood hunk, Ryan Nemeth. Yeah, Ryan got just popped right there by, by Marco. Asking for a timeout. Marco Stunt not willing to oblige. Hits the ropes. Tope Suicida drives Nemeth rips first into the barricade. There's no way to treat a Hollywood hunk. Yeah, don't hit the face. How would you treat a Hollywood hunk, Taz? Well, you just, you know, you want to be nice. You, like you, know, you drive around in nice cars. You go get fancy clothing and furs. Well, artificial Ricky, ones. That's Ricky. an everyday life for us. I was exactly. going to say, you could be a Hollywood hunk, Ricky. Absolutely. I was once a New Orleans hunk. My man, Taz, yeah, let's go. It's a Cajun hunk. Oh, 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 watch out. Marco Stunt dropping the elbow across the spine of Ryan Nemeth. Nemeth, though, kicking out. Also caught a knee to the ass. Knee ass. I believe that was the posterior giblet, Taz. Oh, nobody home there for Marco Stunt. He escapes, though. Nobody home for Nemeth. Whoop, watch out. Wild swing and a miss. Marco with the roll up, roll through. Whoa. And the oh. leg lariat. Ryan Nemeth getting his face worked over here by Marco Stunt. Two, no. Three Mike Posey says it's only a two count. Yeah, Nemeth, he don't know what's hitting him right here. Marco is all over him. Like yep. White on rice. Mm -mm -mm. Or Jasmine on this. That's like a Basmati, but I digress. That's two digressions in one match. Watch out. Here we go. Watch out. Look at Nemeth. Oh my God. Holding oh. up Marco Stunt, giving him a chance to think about it and then spiking him. Oh. The falling fist drop there from the Hollywood hunk. You know, he just has such a massive size advantage, does Nemeth over. Over Marco right now, even just like, like just a hammerlock right there. And that is the uh, that is the shoulder of Marco Stunt that was injured by FTR. Nemeth knows that very well. Does this handstand deal out of a hammerlock? Very unique. 
definitely puts a lot of pain. I mean, me personally, I would go all the way through into a bridge if you're going to do that. But, right, okay. you know, he, he's definitely got a lot of effectiveness out of that handstand or headstand, I should say. Ryan yeah. Nemeth, very obviously a big Hanzo Nakajima fan. Mm. Remember him from Michinoku Pro? I actually do. I know many people who work for Michinoku Pro. Nice try, champ. Me too. Okay. I don't know why he gave me a dirty look with your mask on. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Drop kick there by Nemeth. Two, no! Marco kicking out, showing his resilience. Yeah, Marco, to the point you just made, Excalibur, is always resilient. So if you are Ryan, you gotta keep on Marco's stunt. Marco being brought up to his feet by Nemeth. Hammer throw into the corner. And you could see the, the oxygen being driven out of the lungs. Oh, my. Oh. Wait a minute. He's, oh, he's some gyration. He's gimmick. flossing right back at Marco. Oh! I don't floss like that. I used to string in my teeth, but whatever. This is grotesque. What the hell is going on here? This is, uh, this is, a, this no, is we're definitely gonna, after dark. Yeah, we are. This is dark after dark after Starks. <laughs> As Ryan Nemeth. Got him. Gets countered there by Marco <laughs> Stunk. Oh! Well, you know who's music that is. Uh, FTR, baby. FTR's music. Ryan Nemeth taking advantage of the momentary distraction. Oh, oh man. He's got him. Neckbreaker, He's one, have two, him. three. The winner of this match, the Hollywood hunk, Ryan Nemeth. Ryan Nemeth picking up his first victory, courtesy of the sound guy. I think indirectly, uh, I would assume, I should say, that maybe FTR or Tully or somebody paid a little visit to the, to the music man uh, in our truck. And that distraction definitely oh, hurt. Oh, man. It definitely hurt. Look at the oh, high oh, oh, angle oh. there that Nemeth brought Marco down. He scooped up both the legs and picked up the victory. The Hollywood hunk living up to the hype here tonight on AEW Dark. Well, I'm looking forward to this tag team match that's coming up next because Peter Avalon will tag up with his newest big badass best friend, Cesar Bononi. This is a tag team bout set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring at a combined weight of 396 pounds, the team of Sean Dean and Carly. Bravo! His team making their debut, or tag team debut here tonight. Both men have served in the United States Armed Forces. Great to highlight a pair of veterans here tonight. Carly Bravo making his AEW debut. Well, it's tough not to, you know, cheer on two men that have served our country here in the United States, so that's pretty badass. Opponents coming down the aisle at a combined weight of 441 pounds. The team of Pretty Peter Avalon and Cesar Bononi. It was a couple weeks ago here on AEW Dark. Pretty Peter's pageant provocation, the finals. The final walk down the aisle. Big shoddy Lee Johnson was voted the winner. Peter Avalon didn't take too kindly of it, and he brought in the heater, Taz, not yeah. something that you would know anything about. Oh, whoa. Yeah, well, that's exactly what happened, Excalibur. Avalon, he had a little bit of a buckle, a little shimmy, as I like to call it, up the ankle, and that helped Lee win this whole pa pavocation uh, you go. tournament. You got it. You got uh, it. The, the gimmick, Schnabe, it's Furnham. Anyways, and then next thing you know, Cesar comes out here, Benoni, and just starts putting a beat down on Lee. I understood. I understood why. Lee was not dressed appropriately for that walk-off, in my opinion. Standards are high when I'm here. I know. I understand that. But he actually won because, you know, Avalon buckled his ankle. You okay. Know what I mean? Oh, yeah, sure. It's all yeah. about the walk, bro. No, no, no. You know that. Of course, of course you know that. I, mean, I know you know I would have won that. You definitely would have won that. But right now, it's about Cesar Bononi. He is a massive athlete. Cesar Bononi and Carly Bravo squaring off. Of course, Cesar Bononi and Peter Avalon will be on AEW Dynamite tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on TNT, when they face the Nightmare families, Cody Rhodes and Big Shoddy Lee Johnson. I know I want to win that match. Mm -hmm. 
pretty Pete Avalon and Cesar Bononi on Dynamite. I can't wait for them to be oh, victorious. Oh, oh, oh. Big right hand to the jaw of Bononi. Bravo, bravo, what a shot. But now he got goozled. And Peter, wow, Peter Avalon trying to tell, tell Cesar to re relax. Yeah, I know all about that. <laughs> oh. Well, you know about what? What do you mean? About what? <laughs> what the hell's that mean? Hold on a second. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> the hell? I love it. Oh. 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 Pinpoint accuracy on the drop kick there from Bravo. Puts the far leg, covers. Just a two count. Bravo can move. Good athlete. Now, Taz, you've got your ear to the ground and you've got uh, your ear to a lot of locker room doors here in AEW. I have a lot of connections. Yes. Okay. Uh, What's the word on Avalon and Cesar's uh, relationship? Is this an MJF and Wardlow situation where it's different? Okay, it's, different. it's definitely different. How so? Yeah, it's just different. Thanks, Taz. Uh, Sean Dean, the captain, tags Zen elbow drop across the chest, hook in the leg. One, two, no. It's different. Uh, Wardlow, MJF. There's, it's, there's a lot of old money involved with that. I don't want to get into that. That's MJF's business. And he's a close fr friend of mine. Whoa. This is not about money or anything like that, meaning what says Obanoni and Peter Avalon. That's nothing to do with money. Nothing. Right and left's being delivered by Sean Dean and Carly Bravo. Dean the southpaw using that left hand to great effectiveness. Carly Bravo, the orthodox fighter, using his right. You see what Bravo, Bravo's a legal man. Ricky, what do you think Avalon does with all the money he makes from his male modeling? Oh, I definitely think it goes into his nice robes. I was just going to say his robes. His, uh, his nice blazers that he have. It, it, you didn't actually, have... excuse me, the smoking jackets. They're not blazers. It's Lay off. out. I'm not laying out, <laughs> young just, boy. Just I'm not kidding. laying out. Just kidding. <laughs> he just wanted no, to say, announce it. Oh, come here. Look at the far leg. Bravo, able to kick out. Yeah. He just wanted to say it now. I just wanted to say the word on, that was on like air. That's funny. Don't ever say it to me again. But, but um, anyway, <laughs> you know, you didn't ask me, but I think the relationship between Peter Avalon and Cesar is that. Yeah, you might actually have better connections than Taz. Yeah, they love fashion. They love, okay. love fashion. Look at he's right. They're two fashionable guys that I would definitely hang out with. If he's right, why don't you say it when I asked you? No, because he's right. Rick is a, a very different perspective. Man. Just ask him. He's going to tell you. I'm a very intelligent man. Just See, ask me. I told you. He told you. So, you Team Taz know. unraveling before our eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same. It's, it's same. really it's the same. There's a lot of meetings going on Clubhouse. The same thing happens all the time. This is how we talk up in noise. Oh, Carly Bravo through oh! the boot. Cesar Bononi made him pay for that one. He wiped the tattoos off of him. Whoa. Good. Cesar covers. No, Bravo kicks out. The captain, Sean Dean, if, if Bravo hadn't kicked out, I don't think Sean Dean would have made it in time. Sean Dean needs to follow the rules, okay? I've given him some leeway since he's been here, but respect you, the rest. He's a commissioner now? What are you, Tony? Uh -oh. <laughs> No, he's Tully. Oh, Follow oh, the rules. <laughs> yeah. Stalling vertical suplex there by Peter Avalon. I've given him leeway. I, mean, <laughs> did I missed the memo, bro. Like, what's the... I'm a Renaissance man. Taz, <laughs> come on. Because I get a commission here. What's going on? Did you hear Ricky was in the truck earlier? I, yeah, I actually did. I get memos. I know. Directing, producing. Come on. Ooh. Big boot to the midsection there by Cesar Bononi. I love that. Who, as I mentioned, will be teaming up with Peter Avalon tomorrow night, 8 7 Central on TNT, AEW Dynamite. This duo will take on the Nightmare families, Lee Johnson and Cody Rhodes. All of that and so much more tomorrow night. Oh, 8 7 Central. Yeah, I love Cody, the American Nightmare, mm. and Lee Johnson. They are going to have their hands full with Avalon and this monster here, Cesar Bononi, man. He is impressive. I agree. He might just choke slam Cody like right over the top rope. My, you know I'm awesome with that. Y'all be sick. You know where my money's at on that match, huh? Oh, I don't. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't bet on wrestling matches anymore. Oh yeah, you lost. Not a bad you lost big. Could have used that for the stocks. Ricky Stocks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking shots now. To myself, Taz. To myself. No respect, huh? For myself, I have no, no respect, respect. For myself. Look yeah. at this. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh, well, look at that was, oh. It was an inverted body slam to set Bravo up for the drop kick. No, Bravo kicks out. Sean Dean needs to get tagged into this match for he his really team does. to have no. any chance. You're right, man. Bravo is really in a lot of trouble. He's got to try his best to get over to Sean Dean. And Sean Dean knows that. It's just it's frustrating. Nothing you could do on that, you know, when you're on that apron waiting for your partner to get to you. I know the feeling. And Bravo is a product of the Nightmare Factory in Norcross, Georgia is one of his first ever professional wrestling oh. matches. 
Still wet behind the ears, as they say, huh? As you say. There it is, start the mark. Here we go. Oh! <laughs> John Dean, the captain. Throwing those clotheslines, sending Avalon in. Mr. Rick. Oh, belly to belly suplex. Peter Avalon looked like he ate a spicy pepper there. He calls that the aye aye. There we go. Okay. <laughs> no, I was. Aye aye, captain. No, no, I, I, get, I get it. I get it. I was waiting no, for Bravo to come in. I'm dead now. Oh, oh, flipping senton in the corner. Cannonball senton's Bravo covers here, hooks the far leg of Avalon. No! Bravo shocked. He shot the Avalon kicked out. What a bad way that would be for Cesar and Peter to head into Dynamite tomorrow. Oh, they got upset here tonight. As Carly Bravo getting up with the martinis from pretty Peter Avalon. Hooks the far leg, and that is it. Here are your winners, the team of Cesar Bononi and pretty Peter Avalon. I think we're onto something here with these two guys. And you all, one guy and the other guy's like a giant. So Cody and Lee Johnson, best beware on Dynamite tomorrow night. Whoa. Look at these two. I love it. And you know, that's, that's, they complement each other so well. I wish we had that kind of jovial, like you and me, Ricky. Feeling, like, no, like in Team Tag. Oh, we oh, don't sorry, have sorry. that. We don't have that kind of jovial, loving, you know, just Joe Veal, fun yeah. stuff. But, oh, we a lot, of, a lot of weird emphasis on Joe Veal. Well, no, I'm just trying to expand My some vocabulary with some people at the announce desk. Lexicon, yeah. Well, Jovial so, Joey numbers Dynaflo. better be waiting for a Dynaflo. phone call Dynaflo. because Dynaflo. Peter Avalon and Cesar Bononi are heading into Dynamite tomorrow night with a full head of steam. Number 10 of the Dark Order will be in action next when he takes on Baron Black. Join the Dark Order. This contest is set for a one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from the keep, weighing 240 pounds, Dark Order number 10. 10 competing in singles competition here tonight, but Ricky, how about the tag team battle world that we kicked off Dynamite with last Wednesday night? Both John Silver and Alex Reynolds and Uno and Grayson were part of it, and they very nearly came away with a big victory. They were so close, but yet yeah, so very, very far. <laughs> I love that. Well said, buddy. I like that. Well buddy. said, buddy. Um, Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Dark Order, full effect. Big fans of Dark Order. Love their camaraderie, their, their cohesiveness. They're never on opposite sides of the fence. We got 10. Get ready to lock up here with Baron Black. Baron Black and 10. Set to square off. These two men know each other quite well, Ricky. Yeah, I hear that. They, they train together and they also work together on the independence, huh? Yes, they did. And collar and elbow tie up, neither man willing to give ground. Or oh, we could say they wrestled outside of AEW before AEW. Against, you got a problem with the word independence, Ted? No, I got a word with working on the independence. That I have a problem with. But that's just me. What do like, I know? I didn't mean to say it like that, but well, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, well, we sir. can fix it in post. Yeah. Ricky, do a wild line. Okay. You know, they wrestled each other on the independence there. Baron Black in 10. I heard they about know, that actually. I they did. know each other pretty well. You are correct, sir. Nice little drop step there to get behind 10. Did Baron Black. It takes the side headlock though. But 10, Preston Vance, as he's known sometimes, just looks like he's carved out of granite. He's a tough, tough athlete, is Preston Vance for sure. 10. Nice leapfrog got rolled up. Rolled up. Baron Black. Instead, he was, I think, looking for a submission technique, but. 10 using those uh, those powerful legs effectively. Side headlock takeover. You had scissored there. Great exchange by these two men that know each other quite well. I have a question for you two. Do you think it's unfair to wrestle with a knee brace on, uh, such as 10 is doing? Do you think that allows a disadvantage? Well, Taz, I'm going to take the first part of this, but I'm going to kick it over to you. Do, you. do I think that it is a disadvantage for the person with the knee brace? No, the person who's going against the person with no, the knee brace. I don't think it's well, I guess advantage. I'm not taking the first part I of this. I don't think it's the, well, I'm just trying to get the proper uh, question. I'm not asked the proper question. It's tough to answer next caliber. Now I'll answer the 
freaking question. Oh, I, pump kick there by 10. I definitely think if you have a knee brace on, it's a little bit more cumbersome, which means clunky, and it gets in the way. Thank you, Ricky, for the question. Well, I was going to say, Ricky, not that you asked my opinion, but that it's it's not actually the, the hard knee braces that you typically see on the football field, commonly known as a can opener. It's actually a soft knee brace. I, you know, I'm going to take the high road because I... I, I high I, Road I, Jones over I, here, I, making his return to AEW Dark. High Road Jones, and you're spanky oh. as Jones. <laughs> so... <laughs> oh! <laughs> Thank you guys for the input earlier. You're welcome. Uh, Ricky, Tim Ricky, Ricky which one was up. more insightful? They both were very insightful for different reasons. Uh, Tim is, wow. Oh, better in black. Looking for an exploder. But 10 using those powerful back elbow strikes. And these two men lighting each other up with those chops. We saw Baron Black engage in a chop battle with Ray Phoenix right here on Dark a couple weeks ago. Ray Phoenix got the better of it, but Baron Black comported himself well. He's shown that he's more than just a technician. Oh, dragon screw. Oh my God. That's tough. He almost had a matching knee brace on the other leg. Yeah, it was on the, the right leg that time. Yeah. Oh, did, did, did you see that uh, 10 actually when he came up? He was gripping at that, that knee. Yeah, definitely grabbed oh, that oh, 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 10. Feeling the effects here on this chilly night in Jacksonville, Florida. That'll swell up an areola real quick out here. Glad you guys are enjoying this this man who's quite obviously suffering here. <laughs> well, I mean, I do love violence. Yeah, so do I. I mean, advance. Good friend used to say. Are you kidding me? Like, he's fancy. He doesn't mind. He, he can take a lot of punishment. He'll take an ass whooping and just bring it right back to you. Yeah. Tough son of a gun. I mean, we've seen Preston Vance is, is Durable as they come, he was uh, casual. Well, oh, Baron Black now got control of that arm. Maybe going for a buckle. Yeah, here he goes. Oh, nice. Ooh, hard Irish whip into the corner. You can see Preston Vance favoring that lower back. Vance having some difficulty here, Taz. Yeah, he sure is. Bringing that toughness into the into the whole playing field here, and his chest. He being Vance, his chest is just redded up, man. You could cook an egg on that son of a bitch. I love those types of sayings and jokes. It reminds me of home, so excuse me for... Oh, oh knee drop to the, to the arm of Preston Vance. A, a very unorthodox attack there by Baron Black. I believe that was the arm he injured mm. not too long yeah. ago. Am it's I effect. right, boys? I think you might be right. I don't have a piece of paper with everyone's injury list, but you could be correct. Sir. A broken clock is right once a day. Twice. Twice a day, too. <laughs> Cliché time. We're looking stops. And Baron Black trying to rake the eyes of a man wearing a mask, which is rare. For, for the record here, I have, I have actually loosened my tie and undone my top button. I can't, I can't, I take, this, you, I can't a, take this bickering anymore. As a man who wears a mask, yes. can you have your eyes raked? Uh, it's hard. As you notice, my mask, Taz, has the screens on it. First and Vance's mask right. does not. It's not. Now, my friend, uh, Super Strong Suplex Machine, his mask, hmm. he has screens on his eyeballs, too. Hmm. I can't wait to meet this man. Oh! Uh, yeah. He's supposed to come to this TV, but he got snowed in, bro. You know, he's losing boys. Uh, will I like him? You'll love him, bro. Yeah. Baron Black, Ooh. atomic drop, back, oh. stabber combination. And upset, see, upset. Upset in the making. Did you see Vance's momentum? Yeah, ca Carrying him off the knees of Baron Black. It's nuts. Baron's like, what am I going to do here? He's, you can see he's doing, the, he's doing the mental arithmetic. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Think faster and harder, Baron. Come on. Too much time being wasted here. If it was me, it would have been over already. You are correct on that. You are correct. Because I'm absolute. You're absolute. And I'm, I'm, I'm assassin for Team Tag. <laughs> hey. Sorry. All right. Of course, Team Taz, Ricky Starks, and Brian Cage will be competing. Well, actually, not competing. They will be battling in a street fight coming up on March 7th at AEW's Revolution, our next pay-per-view event against Darby Allen and Sting. Mm. We ain't battling, we killing. Oh yeah, it's gonna be just insanity. Uh -oh. Yeah, but oh, right now, the power. Oh, oh, what a shot. You know what I heard about Team Taz? Yeah. They build assassins. That's what I'm saying, bro. I've been built. My mom made me assassin and tacit. I like that. Yes. Oh, oh, Vance clothesline. Just like we like that. A second one. And Baron Black being sent into the row. Oh, 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 what a backdrop. 
Back body drop there. You can see Baron Black. The effects of that written all over his face. Baron's in trouble here. Baron's in trouble, but able to get that boot up. I'm waiting. Here Gets the boot up. But here we go. Oh, the spot Let's go! buster. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, right now, negative one is loving this, the leader of the dark order. He I, was, loves I was actually thinking the same thing. He's got to be. He loves Vance. He loves Vance. He loves violence. <laughs> Vance with the power bomb. One. Two, three. No winner of this match. Dark Order number 10. Hey, that was uh, definitely a hard hit contest by both these athletes. 10 was victorious, obviously. Wow, what a, what a matchup. That was physical. Yeah, you can see the physicality all over the chest of number 10, Preston Vance. Your winner here tonight, picking up another victory here on AEW Dark. See right here, spine driven right into the mat. The intensity gets amped up. Look at that, baboon. Yeah, Bear Black was trying to fight it, Ricky, but the power of Vance just too much. Dynamite drop in, Ricky. Preston Vance of the Dark Order, number 10, your winner here tonight. This is the story of Matt and Nick Jackson, seen through their eyes. Over the past 20 years, they have documented their tireless journey, their triumphs, and their tribulations. And now, they are ready to share their adventures with the world in their new book. One day, let's grow up and let's be professional wrestlers. This is the story of two brothers that became two loving fathers that went on to become the best tag team in professional wrestling today. This is the story of the Young Bucks killing the business. Young Bucks, we're killing the business. Our semi-main event coming up next. Action in the women's division as Diamante goes one-on-one -on -one with Red Velvet next here on AEW Dark. This bout is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Being accompanied to the ring by Ivelisse from the 305. Diamante! Taz, we talked a little bit earlier during Pac's match about uh, his attitude rivaling yours. I would say Diamante's attitude right up there. Why am I always in the negative attitude people territory? Anthony, Why? care to answer that? Uh, I think Taz is, a, is, a, is brilliant, so... Thank you, sir. Well, I mean, you can be brilliant and have a bad attitude. There you go again with the facts. <laughs> there you go with the facts. And her opponent. Being accompanied by Big Swole from straight out of your mama's kitchen, Red Velvet. How about the news last Wednesday night on Dynamite? Red Velvet and Cody Rhodes will take on Jade Cargill and Shaquille O'Neal on the March 3rd edition of AEW Dynamite, a blockbuster matchup. Holy massive, massive news for sure. <laughs> Cody's got to deal with the massive Shaq. And to see this young lady right here deal with Jade, that's going to be something. I'm yes. looking forward to it. Most certainly the biggest opportunity of Red Velvet's career. Not, not so much in a match, Taz, that will have any effect on her, uh, her rankings here in AEW, but a match that is most certainly going to have global attention. Sure thing. I mean, there definitely there's pressure. Pressure on all the athletes here, but a match like that, you know, in a tag matchup like that with, with mega stars involved, yeah, it's, it's a, a massive opportunity and a lot of pressure for Red Velvet for sure. And Anthony, you know something about competing on the global stage. What does Red Velvet have to do to keep uh, to keep her wits about her in that contest? I think she's got to stay calm. I think she can't be. Ooh, <laughs> big <laughs> match return. <laughs> if she makes it to March 3rd. You've you got to stay calm. You've got to remember your training, and you can't be overawed by the. Um, by the occasion, which is much, much easier said than done. Big leg lariat there by Red Velvet. Looking composed, looking intense. Nice body shots. And you see she, uh, before she delivers a shot to the body, she kind of feigns high to get her opponents to, to bring her hands up and expose yeah. their midsection. Yeah, and she, and she covers her chin, because oftentimes when you get whacked to the stomach, your natural reaction is just to punch back, and. You want to protect your face, and um, yeah, Red Velvet, that's good technique from uh, Red Velvet. Oh! 
Big single yeah. leg drop kick there. Good technique on that drop kick for sure. And she's on the hop. Here comes Red Velvet. Red Velvet with the hook on Rana. It's more of a Tierras, but either way, she rolled Diamante through. But Diamante might have been uh, been playing possum there. And look at this, Eva at least getting in the face of Red Velvet. But Big Swole not taking too kindly to it. Well, yeah, Big Swole definitely had to slow that down. Uh -oh. But Diamante just planted Red Velvet inside the ring. Velvet took her eye off off her competitor, and she's paying the price for it right now, Taz. Oh, smart for Diamante to take advantage of that situation. Very smart. Velvet sent head first into that top turnbuckle pad. Diamante savaging Red Velvet with that chop to the chest and then just a left hand to the face. Referee Paul Turner instructing Diamante to open up that hand. And now she's got Velvet lined up in the corner. Does Diamante the running drop kick? Pair of boots to the chest. Diamante with a huge opportunity here. Hooks the far leg. Velvet kicking out. Good kick out right there by Red Velvet. Showing her heart. That was very good. Can't wait to that March 3rd Shaq match. I cannot wait for that. I met Shaq once. He's a big boxing fan. Met him in Las Vegas. And I'm a big dude. I'm 6'2". I'll go about 230 pounds. And uh, Shaq, he, he dwarfed me. I shook his hand and my hand just disappeared within his hand. It's going to be so enthralling watching him with, with Cody. I'm looking forward to watching Shaq palm Cody's head like a blonde-headed basketball and popping it like a big pimple. Oh, that's what I'm that. Well, that's how I'm looking at it, and that's what I'm looking forward to. Shaq, I've met him also. He is a massive human. I've met him years ago. Massive. Was this a competition? I met him too. No, I met him too. That's right. I did beat him. Did you ever meet him? Yes. Oh. Oh. So what? Okay. Diamante went for the drop kick in the corner. Anthony, how many stones? 230 pounds. A lot. Uh, I know the answer. It's a lot of stone. It's two stones. No, about 16 and a half stone. That was close. All right. That's a lot of stones. <laughs> it's like my wife's engagement ring, but I digress. Oh. Oh. Red velvet. <laughs> Pair of clotheslines, Ooh. and the That's back wow. elbow just spiked Diamante. The point of the elbow as well. Mm -hmm. Ouch. Red, Red Velvet, we saw her, her limping a little bit. Can she execute? Yes, she can. Hooks the far leg. Just a two count there. See, Red Velvet is, in my professional opinion, she's ready for this big moment we've talked about, this tag team match on the third. Definitely ready. Oh. She does not like Jade at all, and, and she's going to team up with Cody, as we discussed. I think she's more than ready for this opportunity. Oof. Standing slice bread there by Diamante, hooks the far leg. I still want to see Shaq crush Cody's head. Well, Taz, I mean, you bring up an excellent point. It's, it's Jade and Red Velvet that will be competing in that tag team matchup. We've seen a lot of Red Velvet. We haven't seen much of Jade. Who knows what she has to offer? Well, that makes it harder for Red Velvet, you know, because there's no tape, really, on Jade. There's no tape. So how do you prepare for some moment? No tape. Cazadora into the Bulldog by Red Velvet. Flatten Diamante hooks the far leg. Diamante, though. I might be dating myself with tape, a digital link. How about that? There's no digital links. Sounds better with tape, but I can't. I think that's why that match is so enthralling, because you've got, like, we know Red Velvet, we know, we obviously know Cody, but we don't know Jade, we don't know Shaq. Yeah, yeah. so many unknown factors. We know, oh, look at this, back elbow into a cover. Yeah, we all know Cody. Huh. That's for sure. But I mean, we, we know Shaq is a you know multi-time world champion in the National Basketball Association. And now he is, but he's gonna how do those skills translate uh, to pro wrestling? I, I don't know. Uh, that's a good point, and I know how big he is. I do. But the thing is, Cody, in between the ropes, this is his world. <laughs> and even if he's giving up a ton of size, like, like like Cody would be the Shaq, you're in the man's world. Cody's a world-renowned pro wrestler. I don't I don't want to give the guy credit, but I have to. Diamante was going for the code red there. Red Velvet able to avoid it. Boot to the ooh, top ooh, of ooh. the knee, the kick to the jaw, and Velvet drop kick to the side of the head. This could be it. One, two, three. The winner of this match, Red Velvet. Anthony, that was one hell of a combination from Red Velvet. Yeah, that kick and that knee, that's the most impressive I've seen Red Velvet. She's coming into form just at the right time. I can, uh, cannot disagree with that, I and mean, that was that was a hell of a matchup by both those ladies. I gotta tell you, it was physical as heck. But Red Velvet, that's good stuff. Momentum right there, kick to the shin, and then bam, oh, right across oh. the face. 
And a single boot across the jaw was the end of the night for Diamante. Red Velvet looks primed and ready to go for Jade Cargill on March 3rd. Well, check this out, main event time. Joey Janela is gonna go one-on-one -on -one against Jack Evans, and that is next. This contest is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Introducing first to be accompanied by Angelico from Parkland, Washington, weighing 172 pounds, Jack Evans. Jack Evans returning to singles competition here tonight on AEW Dark. Taz, here's your big chance. You can do the Angelico dance. Well, the Angelico dance, we don't see Angelico, but he was doing, there it is, a little suave bolo dance. And it's Jack Evans just break dancing like he's on top of, uh, what do you call it? You take a cardboard box, yeah. lay it down on the street. It's a cardboard box. Yeah, that's exactly what they call it, a cardboard <laughs> box. Exactly. <laughs> on the streets. On the streets, bro, <laughs> as you know, on the streets. <laughs> hey, watch out there, Aubrey. Big time main event here tonight on AEW Dark. I'm a bad, bad. And his opponent being accompanied by Sonny Kiss from Asbury Park, New Jersey, weighing 202 pounds. He is the bad boy, Joey Janela. Well, you know, Excalibur Janela taking on a, a competitor on dog right here tonight, like Evans, is impressive to me because he's got a big night tomorrow oh, night. Oh, check oh Evans. God. Well, I was fixing to say he's got a huge night tomorrow night, does George enough. If he makes it that far, because Jack Evans is him with that springboard rider kick. And now, going for the the corkscrew, or the, the backflip off the stage, Jack Evans handstand. Oh, watch out, watch out. And now takes out Janela before the match has even begun. This is crazy, crazy start, but I, what I'm getting at was, hey, TNT title opportunity, Darby Allen tomorrow night on Dynamite against Janela. That's a big opportunity for Janela, and I hope Janela wins. This may be the first time in history that Taz is rooted for somebody from New Jersey. It actually is the first time ever. And Jack Evans, though, he could be, uh, he could be poised to, to upset Janela here. You might be right. If he, if, well, I was gonna say, if he shuts his mouth, but oh, no. God. Janela just brute force attack there, shoving. Uh oh. Jack Evans off the top. Joey. Go to the outside. Diving cross body. Janela. He got part of him, but I mean, it don't matter. You don't have to get hit full speed to get knocked on your rear end like that. Janela just nailed partially, you know, Evans and then the guardrail. But, you know, listen, I, personally, I mean, I, I hope, let's take a look here at this. this Dive, this crazy dive right here off the top turnbuckle, cross body. Oh, man, hip and yeah, man. ribs hitting that uh, hitting that guardrail, but Jack Evans was driven down right there. Joey Janela hooks the far leg. And as you mentioned, tomorrow night on Dynamite, 8, 7 Central on TNT, that man, the bad boy Joey Janela, will challenge Darby Allen for the TNT Championship. Darby and Joey have had so many encounters in the past, some here in AEW, but many more on the independent scene. And they, they seem to engage in a game of one-upsmanship. Who can take the most punishment? And Taz, who benefits in that type of match? Yeah, at the audience, the fans do, I think. And, and Helico grabbing the boot of Janela and Evans hit that that court through Enzi Gary and just dropped Janela. Yeah, yeah Janela is definitely down and out right now and hurt. And he's got a cover coming up here, I think. Cover, lackadaisical cover. And you know the thing is, look, like like we said, like Team Taz said on Dynamite last week. Hey, listen, we're going to be watching Darby Allen defend his title very closely tomorrow night against Janela. Trust me. Trust me. Very closely, bro. Jumping body kick there by Jack Evans. Again, covering one, two. Not a lot of, uh, not a lot of speed on that cover. I think, uh... yeah, well, Evans, I mean, sometimes if you, you can get a lot out of a cover by just having the guy kick out a couple times, your opponent kicking out, it does, ex you do exert energy doing that, you know? Knees to the face by Jack Evans. Sledgehammer shot across the spine, drops Janela to the canvas. Janela is getting whooped right oh, now. man. You know, you gotta look at it. If you're Evans, you're thinking, hey, you're not looking past me. Just because you got a shot for the TNT title, you know, tomorrow night, and you're going against Darby, you're not looking past me. If you're Jack Evans, that's what you're thinking. Jack Evans getting in the, in the face of Sonny Kiss. Sonny getting up to the canvas, not doing Joey Janela any, any favors oh. there as Angelico comes in. And that version of the Moodle Lock gets punched in the face by Angelico. I don't feel safe. I had to get Sonny off the 
Jack Evans saying he doesn't feel safe with Sonny Kiss at ringside. Cover an opportunity to win, but Janela kicking out. Janela's trying to get fired up here to get some adrenaline going. Imagine that if Janela was not victorious in this match, how that would look going in uh, against Darby tomorrow night for the TNT title. Irish whip into the ropes. Back elbow there by Evans. And yeah, I, I mean, things are not looking good for the bad boy Joey Janela here tonight. Yeah, he's got to get rolling here. He might get beat. Evans covered once again, but you know, not a lot of intensity in the cover, Taz. No, no, I know. I, Evans, I just think, wants to wear him down here. And you know, we talk a lot about momentum, Excalibur, and that's something that if you're Janela right now, you, you want to get a strong victory over a, an accomplished pro like Evans to go into that match tomorrow night against Darby. You want momentum. Right, this is a place where Janela could make a statement and really, really get in the head of Darby, saying, you know, effectively tell him, right. I'm not the same man that you wrestled a couple years ago. Correct, correct. Evans, you that he, uh, he's got the, the Manjikatami locked in. Janela standing center of the ring, carrying the weight of Jack Evans. That's a tough hole to be in, man. You just completely, your whole upper body is stretched. And you see Janela slowly fading down towards the canvas. Yeah, Janela's fighting this thing. Sunny Kiss on the outside, root him on. Oh, Janela got him hooked in the fireman's carry. Oh, oh. Death Valley driver into the turnbuckles. A lot of impact right there. Oof. Both men stunned by that, but Janela first to his feet, charging in. Just a, a big, ugly shot from Janela, knocks Jack Evans to the floor, and Janela, tope suicida. Yeah, that hit its mark. That was per perfect by Joe Janela right there. Sonny Kiss happy about it. I think that that rider kick, that springboard rider kick before the bell may have rattled Joey Janela, but it looks like the bad boy has finally regained his bearings. Hold on, crotch. Oh. He's got Jack Evans up on the shoulders. Death Valley driver center of the ring. Might be it right here, buddy. Janela covers two. No, Evans kicks out. Thought he had him, and it wasn't a lot in that kick out by Evans. So if you're Janela, I would not get frustrated. I would stay on, on Evans right now, because you might have him right where you need him. Joey Janela up to his feet. You can see a little, little glassy eyed. That's how he always looks. <laughs> Just his face. Big right hand though from Evans. Evans up to the top. Jack Evans from the heavens. Orkan Rana. Great job by Evans. What's he got in mind here? Boom. Brings Janela in. Middle rope. Phoenix Ooh. splash. Knee drop. One, two, no. Man, that was oh, brutal right there. Might have been a little little Yambag Jones there. Yambag City for sure. That'll create a Yambag Galaxy uh, sensation when that happens. A spinning type of thing going on. But Rob, referee Aubrey Edwards agrees incidental contact there was not Jack Evans' intent, so this match will continue. Round kick followed up by Janela with a forearm. There's a round kick by Evans. Janela winds up a series of right hands. Kick across the chest from Evans. Janela rolling elbow strike. Evans stunned against the ropes. Joey Janela, what has he got in mind? Be careful, watch Evans here. Builds up ahead of steam. Handspring back elbow. But Janela! Oh! Yeah, I don't think Evans had no clue that Janela was on a hop, running right behind him. Jack Evans sent him to the ropes when he hangs on to the top. Double boots to the chest, Jack Evans. Spring ball, look at that. Ooh. Springs off, catches his feet. Oh, the thrust kick stopped Evans in his tracks. Joey Janela looking for that big clothesline shot. No. Oh, damn, that poison round of a oh. What the hell happened? Janela. Janela sprung to his feet, had enough wherewithal to hit that kick, but that's about all he had left in the tank, Taz. That was nuts. I don't, maybe. The top, we couldn't tell by the angle. Maybe Janela top of his head didn't catch all of that mat. That's a tough move to just pop up from. Sonny Kiss and Angelico. Take a look here. Urging on the respective partners. You see. Oh! Wow. I don't know. I, it, was, it was a nasty landing, how whatever it was. Maybe blocked with a form a little bit of something. That was that was impressive. Both men struggling to their feet. Janela rises first. Evan shortly behind. Right hand from the bad boy, though. Evans 
goes to the outside. It's a dangerous spot for Jack Evans to be in if you're Joey Janela. Jack Evans going back to the top where he's comfortable. Jack Evans up to the top. Went for the 450 splash. Janela got the knees up. Inside curl here, one, two, no! Evans able to kick out. That would have been funny to me if he would have got him with that tight cradle after all the stuff these guys have been doing. Pack this pile driver, maybe. No, maybe not. No, nope. Evans escapes out over the top again. The kick from Evans stunning Joey Janela. But Janela a step quicker than Evans there. Hit him with the lariat. And Joey Janela. Can't yeah. afford to let Jack yeah. Evans hang around for much longer. He's got him hooked up. Oh, Package, pile driver. Done. One, two, three. No! Oh. Wow! What the hell? Jack Evans showing how resilient he is. The bad boy planted him. But Jack Evans still in this fight. Janela knows he has to win this match to gain that momentum going into Dynamite tomorrow night against Dolby. The diving elbow drop from the bad boy. One, two, three. That is it. Here is your winner, the bad boy, Joey Janela. Well, that was a hard fought battle, Excalibur, for sure. Both men. Janela ends up on top going into Dynamite with the momentum we were talking about. He's going to go into Dynamite with oh, some momentum, God. but Taz, it was not without its cost. The bad boy Joey Janela banged up here tonight by Jack Evans. Will that affect him tomorrow night in his TNT Championship match against Darby Allen? I hope not, because I hope Janela wins and becomes a new TNT champion. Well, Joey Janela building up some momentum, headed into D Dynamite tomorrow night. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us here tonight on AEW Dark tomorrow night, 8, 7 central on TNT, an all new edition of AEW Dynamite. It will be Chris Jericho and MJF teaming up to take on Max Caster and Anthony Bowens, the acclaimed. Not only that, Cody Rhodes and Lee Johnson of the Nightmare family will join forces to take on pretty Peter Avalon and Cesar Bononi. And the TNT Championship will be on the line when Joey Janela challenges Darby Allen. All of that and so much more tomorrow night, 8, 7 central. It's TNT AEW Dynamite for Taz, for Ricky Starks, for Anthony Agogo, for Justin Roberts. I am Excalibur. Good night, everyone.